on the issue of the Middle East with our next guest. Anjali? The United States has affirmed its, quote, unshakable and unbreakable bond with Israel just days after Israel's ambassador in Washington said ties between the allies were at their lowest point in 35 years. On Tuesday, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and White House spokesman Robert Gibbs softened their tone toward Israel. The president uh, uh, was in Israel to reaffirm our unwavering commitment to the security of Israel and its people. Uh, Mature, as I said earlier, mature bilateral relationships can have disagreements, uh, and this is one of those disagreements. It, it, does not, uh, it does not break the unbreakable bond that we have with the Israeli government and with the Israeli people on their security. In an interview in Meet the Press this Sunday, Clinton had been sharply critical of Israel's announcement that it would build 1,600 new homes in the Jewish settlement of Ramat Shlomo, coming as it did during Vice President Joseph Biden's visit to the country. It was uh, not just an unfortunate incident of timing, but the substance was, uh, you know, something that uh, is not needed as we are attempting to move toward uh, the resumption of negotiations. It was insulting, and uh, it was insulting not just to the vice president, who uh, certainly didn't deserve that. He was there with a very clear message of uh, uh, commitment to the peace process, solidarity with uh, the Israeli people, but it was an insult to the United States. Despite the strong words from high-level American officials, Israel's response has been to apologize over the unfortunate timing of the announcement, but refused to back down on settlement construction. Earlier this week, Netanyahu reiterated that, quote, building everywhere in Jerusalem will continue as it has over the past 42 years. Well, the pro-Israeli lobby has criticized the Obama administration for toughening its stance on Israel. But there's another powerful lobby that seems to have a different opinion, the U.S. military. Veteran military and foreign affairs analyst and author Mark Perry reports at foreignpolicy.com that CENTCOM commander General David Petraeus is concerned America's policy on Israel might be jeopardizing U.S. security interests in the region. Perry's piece is called The Petraeus Briefing, Biden's Embarrassment is Not the Whole Story. He's also author of the new book, Talking to Terrorists, Why America Must Engage with Its Enemies. Mark Perry joins us now from Washington, D.C. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Mark Perry. Start off by explaining what exactly uh, General Petraeus uh, sent to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. What is his stand? Uh, General Petraeus sent a briefing team to talk to Admiral Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to give Admiral Mullen a briefing on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the facts of the conflict. But it was also clear from the briefing that this was a central concern uh, among David Petraeus's area of responsibility, the 22 Arab nations of the Central Command, and that uh, in his travels throughout the region, the leaders of these countries had made it clear to General Petraeus the greater the Israeli intransigence on resolving the conflict with the Palestinians, the greater the erosion in American security. It was quite a, um, quite a blunt briefing. How do you know that this briefing took place? Because I talked to uh, the people in the Pentagon who know about the briefing. And in fact, General Petraeus yesterday didn't take issue with it. When he made his comments in public on the Senate Armed Services Committee, his first action item in his prepared remarks with the effect of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on his area of responsibility. And he made it very clear that without progress on this issue, uh, it was going to remain a problem in his area of responsibilities. He made that very clear in his testimony. Uh, yes, Mark Perry, at, at the Senate panel hearing yesterday, um, General Petraeus brought up Israeli-Palestinian tensions, and he said, quote, I believe the, the conflict foments anti-American sentiment due to a perception of U.S. favoritism of Israel. Arab anger over the Palestinian question limits the strength and depth of U.S. partnerships with governments and peoples. But I wanted to play a clip from that hearing. In response to a question from Senator John McCain, he also denied having made a request to include Israel in the Palestinian territories under his command at CENTCOM. Neither Israel nor the Palestinian territories are in the central command area of responsibility. But yours uh, is having, all of this. Having said that, we keep a very close eye uh, on what goes on there because of the impact that it has, obviously, on, the, on that part of CENTCOM that is the Arab world, if you will, uh, and in fact we've urged at various times that, that uh, this is a, a critical component. It's one reason, again, we invite Senator Mitchell to uh, brief all of the different 
conferences that we host and, and seek to support him in any way that we can when he's in the Central Command part of the region, just as we support Lieutenant General Dayton, who is uh, supporting the training of the Palestinian security forces uh, from uh, a location that is in the CENTCOM AOR as well. Uh, and in fact, although some staff members uh, have various times and, and I have discussed and, uh, you know, asking for the Palestinian territory